When new graphics cards are released, YouTube becomes flooded with benchmark videos. And they're all usually the same. Slap a graphics card into a test bench, run the most popular games on the highest possible graphics settings, and bam, everybody's happy. Now that's all fine and dandy if you're a casual pleb, but what about us competitive gamers who want the highest possible frame rate for our ultra high refresh rate display? Almost everyone in my gaming circle is extremely competitive and none of us run on the highest graphics setting. And not only that, but every day people are looking for ways to get better and a high refresh rate and high frame rate combo is a great way and it definitely helps. The lack of videos for competitive graphics performance makes it kind of difficult to gauge how many frames we're actually going to get when we turn the graphics all the way down. Now, obviously it's going to be higher, but by how much is the question? Well, today I'm here to answer that with two of Nvidia's offerings. The first card I have is a mid-range card, which is an Asus GTX 1070 ROG Strix. Now the fan trial is normally black, so if you're wondering why it's white, I basically painted it just to match the rest of my girlfriend's setup. The second card is on a higher end, which is a Founders Edition RTX 2080. Now generally, you want your PC to be well-rounded in terms of specs. You don't want to go out and get a crazy good graphics card and then go and get a crappy CPU because you're basically going to bottleneck and you just won't get the best performance. Now here we have two of those well-rounded systems. The first one here is an Intel build. This PC is running the ROG Strix Z390E Gaming Motherboard, 32 gigs of G-Skills DDR4 Trident Z RAM running at 3200 MHz, and an i7-8700K overclocked to 4.8 GHz. The other system is a Ryzen-based build. That PC has an Asus Prime X570 Pro motherboard, 32 gigs of Corsair's DDR4 Vengeance RGB Pro RAM running at 3200 MHz, and a Ryzen 5 3600 running at stock frequency. So what we're going to be covering in this video is how many frames we can basically get on the most popular shooters with the most popular competitive graphics settings. Now, the way I'm going to be determining what a competitive graphics setting is, is by basically going to the Google and finding out what most pro players end up using. The games we'll be testing are CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege, Apex Legends, Fortnite, PUBG, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the new one. Okay, so I should have mentioned this probably earlier in the video, but why would you want to do a competitive graphics setting? A lot of people nowadays run a 120 to 144 hertz monitors, and in my case, 240. Um, the main advantages of doing something like this is basically the higher frames you're, you're going to be able to push out, and as long as your monitor can support it, um, basically you're just going to be able to see what's going on in front of you a lot easier. So that's one of the main reasons why professional players end up using lower graphics settings, because sometimes frame rates will lower themselves down in high intense situations, um, or in cases like smokes, smokes take up a lot of computer resources. But yeah, that's the main reason. It's just so you have those frames so you can see it easier, see quicker than your enemies as long as they're running 60 hertz or something like that. That's, all, that's about it. But also another thing is usually when you run at lower graphic settings, um, you're going to be able to do pixel peek it, peeping, blah, 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 pixel peeping. Uh, basically, that's when you have anti-aliasing off and you're going to be able to see individual pixels and basically just see enemies easier like that. If you use something like anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing is kind of bad for things like CSGO, Siege, all these kind of games because it smooths out the edges and you can't really see uh, enemies that just very little bit extra. But just that it's very, very minute, minute, minimal, very, it's a word, it's something. All these things add up together and just make you have the quickest response possible. Now starting with the RTX 2080, you can see that it doesn't really matter on CSGO which graphic settings you choose. Whether you go with the highest graphic settings or the competitive, you're going to be able to hit the maximum possible viewing frame rate which is 240 frames. And if you're at 144Hz, this is less of an issue for you. Next on to Rainbow Six Siege, you can see that it's about the same story. Whether you go with the highest or the competitive settings, you're still going to be getting amazing frame rates. Now, I wouldn't really worry too much about the minimum frame rate, only because that's very high, first of all. And second, you're very rarely going to end up going to the lowest at all times. I mean, as you can see, the average is much higher than the low. Next, moving on to Apex Legends. Now, for Apex Legends, you can see that the maximum frame rate is 240.8. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because there is no unlimited frame rate for the game. It'll only cap out at what your monitor is capable of pushing out. So the average frame rate there of 236.4 is only lower because it's counting the maximum with the minimum. So it could potentially be higher. Then on to Fortnite, this is where I see the biggest difference. So for the highest graphic settings, we're averaging about 167.4. However, if we drop that to the competitive settings, which is pretty much all low, we're looking at 317 on average, which is really high, 
And if you look at the minimum, you could see that you're not going below the 240 frame rate mark, which is nice. Now for COD and PUBG. Now if you look at COD and PUBG's max settings, you're going to see that it's not really the greatest performance in terms of an average or max or minimum. What you really want to do here is go with the competitive graphic settings because you're going to be getting much more smoother frame rates. Look at PUBG for example, 111 on the highest with 180 on the competitive. That's a huge jump, 70 frames, you're going to notice that difference for sure. For COD, on the other hand, you might not notice too much of a difference. Some people won't notice a difference between 140 to 195 FPS, but some people do, and some people will like that. So overall, you can see that there's some pretty big differences no matter which game you're playing. I mean, this is to be expected, but again, like I stated earlier in the video, we didn't really know how much of a difference it would be. And some people like me want this kind of information. We don't play on the highest, so we don't care about how many frames you can get on the max settings. Now moving on to the GTX 1070. You can see for CSGO that it pretty much again doesn't matter which one you're going with because you're still going to hit at least 240 on average. The 68.7 and 79.2 minimum FPS you're seeing on both graphic settings, they don't really matter because that was happening when I was inside smokes, and if you're inside of a smoke, you're not even going to be able to see anything anyway. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege, we have huge improvements going from the high to the competitive graphic settings. Now again, 131 is not bad for average, but it's not 229. And if you're, again, rocking at 240 hertz, like I stated so many times already, you're probably tired of hearing it, this is going to matter a lot. Moving on to Apex Legends, we have the same story with the capped out frame rate again. There are no unlimited FPS options for that game, so the 143 average you see on the competitive settings, that's pretty much as high as it would let me go. That could potentially be higher, but the max again, as you can see, is 145.1, and, you know, it probably just bounced up there and went back down. That could probably be in the 200, 300 FPS range, but again, we can't see that. But there are huge improvements with the minimum FPS. With the competitive settings, we're looking at 138.1 FPS on the minimum, whereas the highest settings has 76.9, which is pretty low. Some people might not care about that. I know I do. Next, moving on to Fortnite, we also have a dramatic difference between the high and the competitive settings. So the average we're getting on Fortnite's max settings is 112. Dropping that down to the competitive, we have 292.7, which is a huge increase. Not only that, but if you're looking at the minimum FPS, you can see that the minimums are almost tripled. That's insane. Next, we have COD and PUBG. Same story as the previous chart with the RTX 2080, except I'm kind of surprised to see that PUBG's competitive graphics setting mode can pretty much keep up with the RTX 2080 on competitive. The RTX 2080, if you don't remember, was 180.1 FPS average, whereas the GTX 1070 is 173, so if you're playing PUBG, no matter which graphics card you're using, just pretty much play on the competitive. Now, another thing that surprised me even more with PUBG in particular is that the GTX 1070 actually beat out the minimum FPS compared to the RTX 2080. Now, again, this isn't a sustained low FPS. This is just the lowest it's ever hit at one point. And the GTX only hit 147.9, whereas on the RTX 2080, that dropped down to 117.2. But then going back up to Call of Duty, you can see that the average has increased a little bit. It might not be enough for some people, but it is an improvement. Now, if your graphics card wasn't on this list, because let's be real, it's only two graphics cards, it's a small sample size, all you need to really do is just kind of figure out what card you have and how it stacks up in terms of performance compared to the RTX 2080 and the 1070. Then you're kind of going to get an idea of what kind of frame rate you'll be getting. So that's pretty much it. You can see that some games have a big difference and some have no difference. And, um, and by no difference, I mean you basically can play at the highest or the competitive settings and you still will be able to hit the desired frame rate you're looking for. Now, if you're wondering why I did only 1080p monitors and shooters, it's because for any other genre, it really doesn't matter as long as you're getting at least 60 frames per second. For shooters, it's really it really matters more the higher frames you get and the higher refresh rate. So that's the reason why I'm only doing that. Now, for 1080p, I don't see any pro players playing on anything like a 1440 or 4K monitor. And the reason why is because there's no 240Hz option for those types of displays. It's only for 1080p as far as I know. So that's the main reason why. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. If not, leave a thumbs down. Um, if you really liked what you were watching, maybe consider subscribing. But other than that, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Peace.